And so Pinocchio is left without the guidance of conscience and the cricket is trying to figure out how to get off Pleasure Island. But he goes through the gates and he sees what's actually going on. And what's going on is that the coachman has this like slave boat down in the bowels of the island and he's got all these these black suited minions with the glowing eyes working for him and they're rounding up what look like donkeys and so they're beasts of burden right and so there's an idea here that if you produce if you pursue impulsive pleasure to the detriment of the development of your character you're going to end up a beast of burden you're going to end up a slave to a tyrant and that's exactly right and so Anyways, uh, the cricket doesn't, you can see one of those black suited horrors here hauling donkeys out of this crate and one of them has a hat on and they look very sad and they're in different crates and one of them says sold to the salt mines and one says sold to the circus and so they're shipped off to be, to be slaves roughly speaking and they look very sad and then one of them gets hauled out of the crate and he's still got a hat, he has a hat on and a sweater and he can still talk. He's a boy, it turns out, that's been half transformed into a jackass, a brain jackass, prior to being enslaved. And so that's, that's another thing that's quite interesting about the story. You know, it, it, it also makes the case that if you replace your voice with stupid braying, that the probability that you're going to become enslaved by a tyrant is extraordinarily high. And I always can't help but think about ideal, ideologues in that manner. You know, Solzhenitsyn wrote about the radical left ideologues that got thrown in the Gulag Archipelago. You know, so they were party stalwarts. This happened to a lot of people. True believers who were vacuumed up by the Stalinist machine and thrown, in, thrown into the Gulag anyways. And he said that those people suffered in some ways more than everyone else because, what did he say? They were bit by the beloved hand that fed them. And so the first while when they were in the camps, Solzhenitsyn really didn't know what to do with people like that because on the one hand, well, they were in the camps and wasn't that awful and they'd been torn away from their families and, you know, stripped of all their identity and their status and so that's pretty rough. But on the other hand, they were writing letters protesting their innocence and assuming that everyone else in the camp was guilty but they were innocent and they were still strident believers in the communist process. And so, you know, it was a conundrum. Here they are being terribly punished but by the same token they're also the perpetrators of their own demise so how do you deal with them? And they used to play comrades, he said they used to play comrades with people like that and invite them into an ideological discussion about the camp situation and the situation in the country as a whole and let them rattle out their ideological justifications for everything that had happened in, in trying to make them parody themselves roughly speaking, it was a rough game and Solzhenitsyn also concluded that there was no helping someone like that when they were still ensconced inside that braying ideology. You could predict everything they were going to say. It's like someone had a crank, you could just crank it and out would come the proper ideological formulas. But then he realized that as soon as they, let's call it, repented of that and started to realize their, their own role in it or the error of the system, then he would start communicating with them, you know, as if they were people who who you could communicate with, yeah. So that was very interesting as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, this kid is still a little bit human. He starts to cry for his mom and the coachman basically throws him back into the crate and says that he's not ready yet. And the reason for that is that he could still, he still had the power of independent speech. You remember right at the beginning of the movie when the mouth was painted on Pinocchio, we saw that mask that was really glaring at the process. I said that character recurs continually throughout the movie and is a good example of that because the coachman is the enemy of anything that has its own voice. So he's the anti-Geppetto, that's a good way of thinking about it. He's the tyrannical aspect of the, of the culture. But as, insofar as one of these mostly donkeys, mostly jackasses can still talk, then they're not completely fit for slavery. And you remember this movie was also being made at about the same time that um, the Nazi transformation of Germany was taking place and so all these terrible underground things, you know, this, this process whereby people were being reduced to, to ideological slaves, say, 
and in this terrible process that was all playing out in Europe in a very big way. And it's not like people weren't aware of that, you know, it was in the air. So, anyways, the, the donkeys, the jackasses that can still talk are crying and complaining and repenting and the coachman turns into a full tyrant again and cracks a whip, if I remember correctly, and says, you've had your fun and now you're going to pay for it. So the cricket gets word of all this, he gets wind of it, he starts to understand what's happened, is that all these bad kids were enticed out onto this island so that they could be enslaved. And he's really uh, taken aback by that, to say the least, but he realizes what's going on, so he runs back to find Pinocchio. And then the scene switches back to the eight ball bar where um, Lampwick is drinking beer and complaining about what the conscience said. You know, because he's kind of guilty and ashamed, but he won't admit it because he doesn't admit anything. He knows everything. He's not going to admit anything about himself that isn't perfect. He's a real totalitarian in training. And he drinks this beer and he's laughing about the conscience and putting him down. And then he says, well, what, what, is, what does he say exactly? What does he think I am, a jackass or something like that? Maybe that's not the words exactly. And then he grows these, these ears. And Pinocchio sees that and immediately takes a look at the beer and stops drinking it. And then Lampwick transforms one more time and his face turns into the face of the donkey. And he's laughing still. And then his, his hands, oh yes, he laughs and he starts to bray like a, like a jackass. And he's horrified by that. And then Pinocchio laughs and the braying comes out as well. And so now they're absolutely horrified. And, Lamplick actually figures out what's going on. He figures out that he's been tricked and that he's transforming and he's completely horrified by it. He becomes conscious of what's happening to him. And there's one particularly, I would say, dramatic scene where his hands have transformed into hooves and he's kicking and, 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 and uh, leaping around the room in panic and he comes up to a mirror and sees himself as a jackass and then he turns around and breaks the mirror. And so, you know, he's self-conscious for a moment, then he destroys his capacity for self-consciousness, then he transforms entirely into a jackass. He's farther down the road than Pinocchio, and he comes crawling to Pinocchio to save him, and asks that the conscience comes back so that he can get out of this, but of course it's a bit too late. And so then Pinocchio grows jackass ears, and he's absolutely terrified by it as well. He knows what's coming, and uh, the cricket comes back and, and guides them off Pleasure Island. And so then they end up on a cliff, because this is an island after all, and they have to jump into the unknown, right? Out of this impulsive, adolescent, hedonic playground into the unknown. And that's how they escape. And that Most of your viewers will have watched Pinocchio. Probably. There's a scene in Pinocchio where Geppetto wishes on a star. Right, and what it means is he lifts up his eyes beyond the horizon to something transcendent, to something ultimate, because that's what a star is. It's, it's part of the, of the eternity of the night sky. And so he lifts his eyes up above his daily concerns and he says, what I want what, what I want more than anything else is that my creation will become a genuine individual, right? It's, it's a heroic gesture because it's so unlikely. And that catalyzes the puppet's transformation into a real being. And we start as puppets. And so the trick is to get rid of your goddamn strings. And you remember in Pinocchio, he faces a lot of temptations. One is to be a liar. The other is to be a neurotic victim. That's how he ends up in Pleasure Island, where he just about gets sold into the salt mines, turns into a brain jackass and sold to the salt mines, because it's run by authoritarians. Well, okay, so what you do is you lift up your eyes and you say, look, I would like being to progress in the best possible manner. And that's best for me, best for my family, best for society, maybe best for the world. Simultaneously, I would like to attain that. Whatever that is, that's what I want. You commit to that then you tell the truth. And then you can tell if you're telling the truth. You can tell it physiologically. And so this is something to learn. You watch what you say, and you will find out that some things you say make you come apart. 
they make you fall apart they, and you can feel it it's physiologically it's centered in your it's centered in your solar plexus it's a feeling of chaotic weakness and dissolution it's it's a sense of self betrayal and then if you tell the truth that pulls you together and strengthens you and so you can learn to feel when your words are accurately articulating yourself and then you crack this that and that makes you into the sort of person that won't be an Auschwitz guard that won't play ideological games that won't sacrifice other people to their expediency and that's what you have to do it's it's the it's and that's really the core idea in western civilization is to build yourself into a forthright individual who's capable of of telling the truth and and capable of bearing the responsibilities of citizenry and that's what people have to do